Hi everyone, this is Lomi, and today we're continuing our Airbrush Basics series by talking about paints. I've mixed a color match for this head I need to airbrush. Contrary to what you might think, you don't have to buy expensive paints for airbrushing. I did this color match with Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. These are student quality paints that cost about $5 per tube. These can be found in most craft stores and are perfectly safe for dolls. Actually, all acrylics are safe for dolls. That includes alcohol-based acrylics like Tamiya, metallic or pearl craft paints, and even craft paints like Americana, which is under a dollar per bottle and comes in dozens of colors. Some paints provide more coverage than others because they carry more pigment, but you don't have to spend a fortune to get great results. All of these paints have to be thinned to use with an airbrush. For most acrylics, water is enough. You should always use distilled water for thinning paints, as it's free of minerals that could build up in your airbrush over time. The biggest challenge you'll face with acrylics in an airbrush is dry tip, where paint dries on the end of the needle and causes clogs. Adding flow aid to your distilled water can help slow down drying time and prevent that problem. I keep a bottle of pre-mixed flow aid handy all the time. I'll try to get as much paint off my mixing palette as I can to be sure I have enough if I have problems with this project. There's no exact ratio of paint to water, as the consistency of all paints varies, even just from color to color within the same brand. Adding just a little water at a time helps you keep control over the consistency of your paint, and also lets you mix more thoroughly, which helps avoid having clumps form. No matter what kind of paint you're using, you want to thin your paint until it's about the consistency of 2% milk. Slightly thicker or thinner can be okay sometimes, depending on the size of your airbrush's needle and how high the air pressure is but it's usually better to aim for thinner rather than thicker. When your paint is ready to use, it should flow easily down the side of your container, leaving just a thin film of color behind. In airbrushing, you'll build colors up through many thin layers, so don't worry if it doesn't seem like it's leaving behind a lot of color. This mix is close and would probably work fine with a 0.5mm needle and slightly higher air pressure, but if your needle is smaller, like a 0.2 or a 0.3, you'll probably want to thin this a little more. Whenever you thin any paint, you always want to ensure you're using the right thinner. For standard acrylics like these, or more expensive artist acrylics, you'll want to stick to water, flow aid, or airbrush medium, which can be found in most craft stores. Using anything else can make it turn lumpy. But if you're using alcohol-based acrylics like Tamiya, you want to avoid water and thin using either that specific brand's acrylic thinner or rubbing alcohol from your local drugstore. Using water with these can cause them to turn lumpy too. There are exceptions to thinning rules, and I have used water with these in certain situations, but when you're working with something as expensive as an airbrush, you probably don't want to experiment. Keeping standard and alcohol-based acrylics separate is a good idea. While usually regarded as unsafe for dolls except for special situations, which I'll explain more in the future, lacquer and enamel paints may still have a home in your workshop for customizing props. Lacquers and enamels require different types of thinners for best results, but some people have been able to use mineral spirits, too. I prefer to use thinners made specifically for lacquer and enamel paints because it ensures the paint will behave predictably. The last thing you want on an expensive project is a surprise. Last of all, there are ready-to-use airbrush paints, too. These come in a variety of acrylics, enamels, and lacquers, like this all clad. All you have to do is shake them well and pour them directly into your airbrush. They're great for beginners, but they can be limited in color and, like all clad, they can be cost prohibitive. This tiny bottle is almost $15. If permanence makes you nervous, you have other options too. Gouache is water soluble, so it's easy to clean off a doll if you make a mistake. Just use water. But it's also perfectly fine to use in an airbrush. If you're feeling creative, you even have the option of taking cans of lacquer or enamel like this and decanting it into a cup to thin and use with your airbrush. You might wonder why you would do this, since this is ready to spray, but an airbrush can give you really fine details that spray cans can't. So looking at cans for colors and finishes can open up new worlds of possibilities. Last of all is probably the most important. Anytime you thin a paint, you want to strain it to make sure there are no lumps that might clog your brush. Here I'm using a piece of pantyhose over a jar. Use a paintbrush to get the paint flowing through it, and it can help remove any clumps of paint. I'm not sure if you can see them, but I caught a few.
If your paint is particularly lumpy or you don't have any pantyhose laying around, you can also use a regular coffee filter from any grocery store. It will take longer for the paint to filter through and you'll need to use your brush to stir up the clumps now and then so it can keep filtering, but this is an inexpensive option that can be recycled when you're done too. After you're done straining your paint, you're finally ready to airbrush. You can pour it right into your brush if you're using a gravity feed brush like mine, then it's down to business. I like using a dropper to fill my brush because I have really shaky hands, so this makes me less likely to spill. I push down on the trigger to start the airflow and pull the trigger back to start the paint flow. You can move in circular patterns, side to side, up and down, whatever works best for you. Everyone will develop a different method and that's okay. In between each layer of paint, I like to press the trigger and use just the airflow to help speed up the drying. If you're covering modifications like I am, you may want to use an acrylic primer before diving in with the color. For this doll, I actually coated it with clear sealant prior to airbrushing so primer isn't necessary. It's just a little extra texture to help the paint stick. Bit by bit, the color will build up, one layer at a time. This is real time, so you can see it works pretty quick. While I wish I could show you a finished project, this is the exact moment when something went wrong with my airbrush. I thought it was just clogged at first, maybe with dry tip, so I pressed the tip against my hand to cause the air to backflow into the paint cup. This can help dislodge lumps or debris if your brush stops spraying. Unfortunately, what actually happened was that the trigger broke inside my airbrush. Turns out that sticky trigger problem I had didn't have anything to do with kneading oil. It was just worn out. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I use this for a lot more than dolls, and over the past six years, I've airbrushed more than 800 projects. I couldn't get it going again with a broken trigger, so unfortunately, that's all for this time. We'll have to figure out something else for this doll, since I can't afford to repair or replace my airbrush just yet. But that's all for today. Thanks for joining me again. Bye.